We're now at less than 14.2 C, and we're finding area in the coordinate plane using absolute values. The area of a flat surface is the number of unit squares needed to cover the surface. So the area would be the inside here. We can use what we know about finding distances or lengths from video 14.1b, which is linked in the description, and the area of composite figures from video 13.4b, which is in the description, to help us find the area of a polygon in a coordinate plane. To do this lesson, we're going to need to have our area formulas nearby. You can take a screenshot of this if you need. And we covered all these in Chapter 13. And to find lengths for these formulas, we're going to be adding and subtracting absolute values. And we talked about in 14.1b how when the points are in adjacent quadrants, quadrants that are next to each other, they're not in the same quadrant, we add the absolute values. And when the points are in the same quadrant, we subtract the absolute values. So here we have a coordinate plane and we have a figure drawn on here. It's a composite figure. We need to find the area of this polygon a, B, C, D, E, F. And we have the points as ordered pairs for each one. And the first thing we do is divide the polygon into two quadrilaterals. We're going to come straight across here and divide it into two quadrilaterals, a rectangle, and a parallelogram. Now we're going to find the area of this rectangle we're going to use the length of the segment AF as the base and the length of the segment AB as the height because for a rectangle, area is equal to base times height. So we're using segment AF as the base from A to F. The points for A are a 2, 0. The points for F are a 5, 0. Because the Y values are the same, we're going to use the X values and the absolute value of 5 minus the absolute value of 2 is 5 minus 2, which is 3. Now we're going to use AB for our height. A is a 2, 0. B is a 2, 4. We can see the X values are the same, so we're going to use the Y coordinates. We're going to have the absolute value of 4 minus 0, which is 4. Now, that's our base and that's our height. The area is equal to the base times the height, so we're going to do 3 times 4. We know the area for this rectangle is 12 square units. So now we have to find the area of the parallelogram, step 3. For the area of the parallelogram, we're going to be using this segment, BE, as our base. And B is at a 2, 4, and E is at a 5, 4. We can see they have the same Y coordinate, so we're going to use the X coordinates for our base. We have the absolute value 5 minus the absolute value of 2. Well, that's going to give us a 3 for our base. Now, for the height, it's a little trickier. We're going to use a line segment from E, which is at 5 for X and 4 for Y, and we're going to bring it up to the point right here at 5, 7. So we're going to use this segment as our height. We've got a 5 and 4, and we've got a 5 and 7. So the x values are the same, so we're going to use the y values. We have a 7 minus a 4, and the absolute value of 7 minus the absolute value of 4 is 7 minus 4, and that's 3. We multiply the base times the height, and we get 9 square units. Now, the last step, the fourth step, is to add the areas to find the total area of this composite figure. We'd have a 12 plus 9. It's equal to 21 square units. Here we need to find the area of polygon PQRST. The first thing we do is divide the polygon into a rectangle and a triangle. We're going to come across here from Q to S. We're going to find the area of the rectangle using segment PT as the base and segment PQ as the height because area is going to equal base times height. 
So, step two, find the area of the rectangle using segment PT as the base and PQ as the height. We look at P, it's at 0, 0, the origin, and we look at T, which is at 8, 0. We can see the Y values are the same, so we're going to use the X values. We have the absolute value of 8 minus 0, well, that's 8. So our base is 8. Now we look at the height as PQ, P is 0, 0, the origin, and Q is 0, 5. We can see that the x values are the same, so we're going to use the y values. We have the absolute value of 5 minus 0, that's going to be a 5. We know the area for a rectangle is base times height. We've got 8 times 5, that's 40 square units. Now we do the area of the triangle. The formula for the area of a triangle is A for area is equal to half the base times the height. We're using QS as the base. Well, that's going to be the same as PT. We're going to do Q, which is a 0, 5, and S, which is an 8, 5. We can see the Y coordinates are the same, so we're going to use the X coordinates. And we've got the absolute value of 8 minus 0, which is 8 minus 0, which is equal to 8. So that's our base. For the height, we're going to do a point at 4, right here to 5. So the point's right here, and we're going to go up to R. That's going to be our height. So we find the length of this segment, and it's going from 4, 5 to 4, 8. We've got the same X values, so we're going to use the Y values. We have a 5 and an 8. So we have the absolute value of 8 minus the absolute value of 5, and that's going to be 8 minus 5, which is equal to 3. So our height is a 3, and our base is an 8. And half times 8 is 4, and 4 times 3 is 12. The area of the triangle is 12 square units. Now our rectangle was 40 square units. The fourth step is to add the areas to get a total area. We have 40 for the rectangle, 12 for the triangle. We add them, and they're equal to 52 square units for this composite shape on the coordinate plane. I want you to be careful as you're doing perimeters and area. A diagonal is not one unit in length for a perimeter. Here we have the diagonal of what would be a grid square on a coordinate plane. If we take this stick, which is the length of the diagonal, and we lay it along the side here, we can see the diagonal is much longer than a side, and that would be one unit for our perimeter. So this diagonal is not one unit, but diagonals can make two halves. Here we have a half and a half. They can make two halves for one unit of area. So be very careful as you're finding perimeter on the coordinate plane. This is not one unit, and that's not one unit when it comes to perimeter, okay? Because that diagonal line is much longer than one unit. All the examples that we had and walkthroughs that we did on problems for perimeter didn't have these diagonal lines. If you notice, we always went up and then over, then up, then over. So none of them had diagonal lines for the perimeter. We'll get into that later on in higher levels of math. We're finished with module 14 now, and we're moving on to module 15. Our next lesson is 15.1a, and we're going to be using a net and talking about 3D shapes. Have a really nice day, and I hope you'll join me for the next module. Bye.